and welcome to Conscious Conversations. Today's guest is Fabian Molemon. Fabian is the executive director of Called by Love Institute. She is a certified life coach and also an ordained minister with the MSIA organization, the Movement of Spiritual Inner Awareness. And just so you know, as we move into this conversation, Fabian is also my beloved, and we have been together for the past two and a half years. This is a new format that we're doing. So this is the first time that you've seen me uh, leading a conscious conversation. And my name is Craig Stephen Phillips, and I'm one of the spiritual ministry team members, and very delighted to be here with you today, this evening, uh, to have this conversation. As we begin, let's, uh, let's start with just a little bit of meditation. So wherever you are this evening, go ahead and close your eyes. And let yourself relax for just a moment. You know, perhaps you've had a busy day. Perhaps there's a lot going on in your life. So give yourself the chance to just relax for a moment. You know, so often deep meditation is simply the allowing of the body to be still. So just be very still for a moment. And out of that stillness, come to your breathing. Take a few mindful breaths, breathing in and back toward the back of your rib cage. And as you breathe out, simply let go. Let go of whatever you may be holding this evening. Let go of any fear or worry. Let go of any tension or stress. And just for a few moments, become absorbed in the breath. Really feel it as it moves in and flows out again. And as you breathe this way, bring awareness as well to your listening. And listen very, very deeply to the silence where you are. This evening's conversation will be about synchronicity, the power of synchronicity in our life. And I'd like to begin by reading a very, very powerful quote that I came across from James Redfield, the author of The Celestine Prophecy. He writes, synchronicity is essentially a meaningful coincidence that brings us information at just the right time. While leading us forward, it also feels very inspiring and destined in a way. It feels like we're on a path of unfolding in our own personal evolution. 
as we blossom or awaken, we begin to notice that this force in the world seems to be operating and leading us in a certain way. And it's very much a kind of detective effort on our own part to figure out what these synchronicities mean. So with that, I am delighted to bring in my guest this evening, Fabian Mullerman. Welcome, Fabian. Thank you. It's good to be with you. It's great to be with you. And, you know, when um, I knew that I was going to be hosting this conscious conversation and the topic arose, I knew immediately that the person I wanted to have this dialogue with was you because I know that we have talked about and I've seen the way that the power of synchronicity has moved through your life. In fact, you're one of those people that you have this dialogue, I always say, with God in a way that these synchronicities occur to you and happen to you. And um, they are at times quite miraculous. So, Delighted to have you here, and I wanted to begin uh, this evening by just asking you uh, when it was that you became aware of synchronicity, even the word or the idea behind it, and what was happening in your life at the time? Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the question, too. Yeah. I definitely had experienced synchronicities before realizing what they were. And the day I remember perfectly the day that I heard the term for the first time. This was already after my separation, maybe even my divorce. And I had started to connect with the humanities team. I had volunteered at one of their retreats called Seeds of Transformation. And I had stayed in touch with some of the people and we were on a conference call. I was back in my apartment in Brooklyn. And on the call, someone mentioned the word synchronicity. So I asked to understand what it was. And she mentioned a few things and she made a reference to a few books. And one of the book that she mentioned was the book, When God Wings. And I just checked it before we had this talk. It's now called God Wings, but it was called When God Wings. And then I read that book and the other one that had followed that was When God Wings on Love. And that's when I started not only to pay attention and take notes and marvel in how it was happening, but I also started to see some of the patterns that had happened before that I hadn't really had the framework yet to know what it was or, or what it was called. Mm, yes. And so when this came into your life, um, did you notice after the book came and you started to be more aware of what this was called, uh, did it heighten your awareness of the synchronicities that began to happen in your life? And maybe you can talk about that. Oh, definitely. I mean, you, you're right. You, you have been, you know, closely connected to the synchronicities that have happened in the last years. And you have asked me questions about some of the previous ones. But the, it just kind of like wouldn't stop. And um, definitely the, the frequency of noticing them. But then also it started to become more of a two ways because sometimes the synchronicity would totally take me by surprise and be like a real surprise gift. Sometimes it would be an answer to something I had asked or thought about. And so they, for me, they are kind of different types of synchronicities and they show up in different ways. Yes, yes. And I, I love the title of that book, right? Often these... Uh, meaningful coincidences are called God winks because it can really feel like uh, God is com communicating with you directly. And can you remember like some of the earliest, maybe an example of the first time you felt this kind of um, meaningful coincidence in your own life or the first time that you had a synchronicity where it made you uh, pay attention? Mm. I think the the 
the biggest and the one that has over has an you say overarching my entire life mm -hmm. but i only realized it after um being aware and reading those books mm -hmm. and when it started was i was back in belgium i i, I am originally from belgium and i was taking a street that I took purposely, but I was in that area. And then I made a detour to take a street because I remember this was the house of my uh, good friend, Agnes, one of the, she had been living in different places, but this was the house where we would get together and play together. And so I, she passed away and I stopped at the house to kind of like have a moment of connection with her. And I, I had this, ah, gasp as I because I remember the house but I had completely forgot that the number of our house was 63 which happened to be the number of my parents house where I grew up and where they still live and so not only there was that moment but of course it didn't end there I continue and finish my trip there were other synchronicities on that trip for sure and then I came back to New York where I used to live at the time and I would start seeing like 63s like everywhere and then some would be new ones and would be like wings you know like on uh, on license plates or on tickets or however it was but then I also started to realize oh but there are some from things that were already present I just hadn't connected the dots I had a painting for instance in my apartment that I had because my dad brought it at an auction he brought it for the frame and I kept the painting <laughs> but it was signed nine it was signed and painted in 63 then I would notice my well I shouldn't give a lot of my personal information but several of my key um, numbers that I was using every day had the number 63 but I had never connected the dots and that a lot of my friends know about that now. So I will receive now messages or, or texts from my friends when they see it coming up in their life. So it has a ripple effect way bigger than just me at this point. Yes. And uh, of course, knowing you as I do, that number 63 continues to this day to be a very important part of your life, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And, uh, you know, I've been with you in many places, and it's amazing how you notice this number literally everywhere. <laughs> and I mean, as you know, we could spend the rest of our conversation just telling stories about the number 63. Um, but I want to, well, I want to ask you, because we've talked about this. There's a lot of people who are listening this evening that really want these kinds of connections. They want this kind of intimate connection where they feel like God is talking to them, either through a number or it could be a teaching or uh, it can happen in so many ways. This just was the language that you received. And so I'm wondering, after all of these years, um, how is it that you remain aware and awake to these messages without overlooking or without focusing too much? What's the process that you have where these seem to come into your life? Thank you. I love your reference to it as a language. Definitely, uh, it came, you know, 63 is being one example, but as you know, there are other ways. So how do I... I think, and I was really reflecting on that before this recording, um, not not because of your question, but because, because I didn't know yet, <laughs> but mm -hmm. because of just even things that have happened in the last week or week and a half and how on the same topic and the same outcome, it has come in different ways. Mm -hmm. So if I could, um, maybe instead of giving one answer give a few different ways that i feel it shows up yes. the first one is what i was saying earlier when it comes completely by surprise and maybe i'll i'll give a, a concrete example that goes with that 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 follows the thread because um 
I'll back up for a second. So another thread that has been there since my childhood then took a lot of amplified on the forefront and then had subsidized and now is back is the topic of uh, finding four leaf clovers. Yeah. And so back, I think it was in June, we were in the park at where we do the Qigong and that's the case number one where I did not expect it but mm -hmm. suddenly as we're doing the Qigong for forms yes. my eyes ha have a glimpse and I, there was a four-leaf clover I wasn't going to stop the practice mm -hmm. intuitively that day I knew it wasn't for me so I just put my bracelet on it. And then at the end, as you know, ask this, anyone ever wanted to find a four leaf clover? Cause that date felt clearly it wasn't for me. It was to pass it on. Yeah. And then that was, but that was from one of not expecting it, not having it even in my awareness at all. Just like poof, surprise yes. and awareness without looking just like, attention being brought I guess by intuition in a way yes yeah and then case number two um is when there is an intention but it cannot be forced mm -hmm. and on the same topic because you and I um as a result had been looking because you said you never found a four-leaf clover so I was right. Intending uh, have, to... I just want to say that most people listening have probably never found a four leaf clover. In fact, there are people I know who thought that they don't even exist. Right? <laughs> so, and what a perfect topic was St. Patrick's Day coming on. <laughs> That's right. So now you and I had purposely started looking. Yes. A few times. That's right. This was and just it just, last it just would not, it, it would not happen. That's right. Right. So we let it go and then poof, it was gone. Yeah. But then one day on a walk, not long ago, I had this intention of, I, I invoked, I made kind of a prayer. It's like, if it was possible for me to find one for Craig, mm. I would love to be able to give that to him as a gift. Mm. And so I, in this case, I made a prayer, if it was for the highest good, to find one for you. So, so in this case it was a different process. Yes. And then um, I, I was in an area where I could see there are four leaf clovers and I started to look and then intuitively I felt like this is not the right time. Mm -hmm. But I, have an, I had the intuitive nudge of where it was, right? Mm -hmm. So then I kept going, I came back and I knew the spot. I, immediately found it it wasn't even a question so I didn't have to look that time yes so that was but again I'm just using this as a metaphor yes. to have an intention and then when the time is right it just happens yeah. and then the 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 third way that I found was interesting just happened today and I had this nudge, I was like, hmm, wouldn't it be interesting if there would be one today before we talk? I just didn't even know we were going to talk about it for sure, but it was just like, and I got the sense like, yes, yeah. right? Then I, um, I scanned a patch where there were a lot of them, and then there was this sense of, oh, in this area is a yes. But I had to really look for it. It wasn't easy. It only took a few minutes, but it wasn't like the case before where I was just guided to it. And so for me to answer your question, like I see it as a metaphor, not because of the four leaf clover specifically, but in sometimes it just takes us by surprise. Yes. Sometimes we make an intention and then it's easy when the time is right, it's aligned and boom, it's right there. And sometimes we still have to put some effort into it. Yeah. So that's like, it, it has shown in different ways, but often it's not about me alone. Often I notice it's part of a collective and when they are shared, they amplified and then they unlocked another layer. Like if I shared, like I had with my friend Tatiana, I shared something with her. And then because of that, it led to another part. And it's like a treasure hunt of all the synchronicities unlocking that mm -hmm. if one person didn't share the first part, it probably wouldn't have unlocked all the magic that was just there waiting to be revealed. Yeah. But it still takes our um, 
or vulnerability sometimes to say mm -hmm. something that might not even make sense and yeah. then it's getting revealed so there is also of that courage to speak up yes yes absolutely i think that uh, your example there and by the way i want to let everybody know that your chances of finding a four-leaf clover if you look online are one in ten thousand and so fabian has a history she hasn't even given you the whole history with four leaf clovers so believe me this is really a symbolic way that the universe is talking to you and i love what you said fabian because in your examples there you really go into my next question you know people hearing this are going to want to know what they can do to have this happen in their life because I, of course, have had some synchronicities. I think if everybody contemplates, they have had those moments when the universe spoke to them very powerfully, usually in a symbolic way. It's a language of symbolism, right? As, as the four leaf clover is on so many levels. And um, I think that your example there gives those three tiers of how we can come to this and make, not make these happen is the wrong word, but be open to them happening more readily, right? Yeah. So you mentioned this uh, state, and it's almost like a meditative state of being in the flow where you're open. It doesn't mean that you don't do anything, but you're lightly moving through something and then the universe can meet you there, you know, and then there's this this thing where sometimes I think we put too much pressure or we try too hard as we did the day we looked for one, at least I did, and it was not meant to happen. So speak a little bit more about, you know, what people are wondering in terms of the state of consciousness we can bring to opening to these kinds of messages coming to us. The first thing that comes to my mind, and that was back in that original book, I believe that book has been in storage, so I haven't read it in a long time. Mm -hmm. But if I remember well, it was starting with gratitude when we notice even little things, yes. because I, I hope she wouldn't mind, but I was thinking about your mom saying the other day, oh, I don't experience those. Yes. And I thought about that and I was like, you know, even in, in that last time there was one and it's it was a technology synchronicity right she she had something that she was asking you but because i was there it unlocked another level of the answer that wouldn't have happened if she hadn't had quote unquote the mistake in the moment she made it to ask you while I was there and then it's like connecting the dot yes. but by saying I don't experience those without noticing that sometimes they come in little things like that yes it's like it's like opening a door or opening like a like a like peeking into that magic is like first of all maybe it already happens and people don't necessarily notice yes so it's okay the same way it happened many times for me before i started to notice mm -hmm. or to at least know what to call it or to you know know that it was a language and that it was a two-way thing and that sometimes it was one way sometimes it was two ways yeah right and interactive but yeah. i think the gratitude of of even the tiny little things that already happen and yeah. then starting to write them down mm -hmm. because that brings awareness yeah. and then you start to pay attention and then it starts to add up and you're like oh it actually happens more than i realize yeah and then yeah. it's right as as you were saying it's like that state of not um not grasping for it mm -hmm. but being open you know yeah. like like i have when when i had the things with the butterflies coming like mm -hmm. i couldn't grab to try to 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 control it or to you know imprison it in any way it's never going to work but but gently then if that flow is happening 
in any ways, it might be because of a song that's being played. It might be because of a YouTube video that's appearing, an email, yes. um, a text, an image. I mean, it can be coming in so many ways. So I think it's great to keep, or as you talk about, how do you call that? The vision, peripheral? Uh, pan in Taoism, it's the idea of panoramic vision. Right, and this, this happens, you've experienced this during Qigong, it's that when we're focused on one thing too intently, we miss the rest of the view. Exactly. When we re all it takes is a little relaxing of our vision. We're still looking at whatever is in front of us. With that little bit of relaxing, we now get the whole view in front of us, right? Right, so thank you for that. So what I mean is, in this case, it's like having that, that field of possibilities open as far as we can so that the language might come through a song or an email or someone or a thought and then someone say something that you just thought about it can come in so many ways and if we can keep it as open as possible then we can start to noticing them more and have that um playfulness with the universe like ah that was funny or you know mm -hmm. like oh it's just like thank you and then also even if even if we don't write them down also you know noticing and say thank you or like you know a little smile or something like like you would do in a relationship you would say oh thanks for that that was a nice gift thanks i received that you know and and one of the way i feel sometimes too and i think you do too is like through the gut chills right if, if someone says something that really is a powerful truth that resonates it feels through the whole body and yes. it's just taking the 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 experience up to the level of completing the flow of giving and receiving right so we receive it then we can give the thanks yes absolutely and as you're saying fabian the more we give thanks for those chills for those recognitions the more they do tend to happen and it's just a matter of us being aware and present in this way that we're talking about that's not forced but allowing that we we begin to receive those communications more and more absolutely or maybe we don't even receive them more but we see mm -hmm. them we notice them more maybe on top of that we receive them more too right because yeah. it's like oh yeah they notice it it's more fun to give you know it's like it's really like like in life <laughs> <laughs> well said, and I, I'm glad you said that. That, um, And I want to make this point to everybody listening tonight that there may be people saying, oh, that's great for Fabian or Craig, but these things never happened to me. And what, what we should always understand is it's, a, it's the level to our openness to these uh, miraculous, then they really are miraculous. And I love what you said before, Fabian, they don't have to be these big events. They can be a small thing that leads like a thread to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And when you get to that last thing in that thread where you've gotten the message you needed, you're able to look back and say it started right in that moment with that one thing, right? When that friend said something to me or I got a phone call out of the blue from another friend that I hadn't talked to in a long time. And that sets you, it's what James Redfield said when I read his quote at the beginning here, it's like detective work sometimes. Definitely. But it's detective work worth noting because it does, it is a thread of events that can lead to a realization or like you said, a doorway opening into this greater magic or the direction that we need to go in, right? Definitely. Yes, yes. Yes, I mean, even you bringing up uh, Jim Redfield, which we hadn't talked before, I mean, yeah. there was a, many layers of synchronicity, even with that. Mm. And Please. and the he came to Unity of Testing not so long ago, mm. so I got to meet him. But for me, that started way back in Brooklyn. I found his book. Someone put his book in front of their home, so that was my introduction to the Celestine prophecy. Wow. And then many things followed. <laughs> but yeah, it's exactly right. And um, the detective work, and the ways that it can come in so many ways. Yes. And just that 
that willingness to as you said you know you you might not know that there is a thread following but if but if you don't say the first thing because your intuition is just like you know you don't even think about it, but you say one thing and then it unlock even for someone else yeah. so the thread is not even only individual a lot of those threads are collective too absolutely so very true and i think that your words about again this is another layer is being willing to ask um i know i know in my own life that um one of the things that has brought on synchronicities is when i actually ask the Tao or god for a sign i know that we hear about this and we think this only happens to other people but um i'll tell just a very very quick story that you know it's probably one of the most dramatic synchronicities i've had in my life but it goes to to what we're talking about on so many levels everything is kind of hit here especially this teaching about asking god for these uh messages and it it, it happened when i was finishing my first book uh which is called the buddha's dog and um, i had been working on this book for a very long time and it had been edited it was very close to being done and sent out into the world but I was still laboring over certain things and I had really reached a point of complete frustration. In fact, it was self doubt about whether I should even put this book out. I was so close to it and had read it so many times that I was, to be frank, I was very sick of it. And so one day I was over at my neighborhood Starbucks and I was contemplating this question and feeling incredible frustration. And I was sitting in a chair that I used to do my writing in. And by this chair, there was a very large open window. And in the moment of my frustration, I closed my eyes and I said a prayer to the Tao, to God, you know, please give me a sign as to whether you want me to go forward with this book or should I just let it go? But I really don't know what to do now. Can you guide me? And I said it so deeply and sincerely. And in that moment, literally when I opened my eyes, I felt the presence of a little being right to my right through the window. And when I looked, it was an English bulldog looking at me through the window. As I said, the book is about an English bulldog. That is exact, and I know for people listening, that is very, very dramatic. Most of my synchronicities are perhaps not that dramatic or they're not about finding a series of four leaf clovers they're about smaller things but i also want people to open to this possibility that it can be quite dramatic if you are open it's all the things that you touched on fabian if you're willing to come to this language and to this openness to the divine it can be quite dramatic and um we can find i'll use your four leaf clover as the proverbial four leaf clover where we find the guidance or we get that thing that we most need for the next step as we're talking about so yes they can be quite dramatic and um all that all that you've touched on being open being grateful and now this point of asking if you feel that you need to ask right I love that story with your book. So powerful too. And just in case some people are listening that do not resonate with the word God or Tao, or it can just be also that you feel that connection with your higher self. And however that is, even if it's not um, a spiritual term, that, you know, it, it I mean, the Tao, I don't know if you would, anyway, I'm just wanting to put that out because sometimes, and we have experienced it lately too, it can even come as a result of a dream or, you know, so it, it, I think it's kind of, we are comfortable with that being in a spiritual language, but if some people are not, that's okay too, because it, it might come through the, through the higher self, the unconscious, the in any way. So I just don't want to put a limit there. I think I think that's a really good point, Fabienne, is that um, because the universe is unlimited, 
it is it it is also unlimited in its ability to speak to you and speak to you in a way that you will understand if you're paying attention yes so i think that's a really good point and this brings me you know to a final topic that i wanted to uh talk with you about today in terms of um synchronicity and i just want to read a quote from deepak chopra uh, that i found leading up to this conversation that i found quite moving and quite powerful so i'm going to read this now deepak writes according to vedanta which is the indian system of philosophy and many other things he says there are only two symptoms of enlightenment just two indications that a transformation is taking place within you toward a higher consciousness. The first symptom is that you stop worrying. Things don't bother you anymore. You become lighthearted and full of joy. The second symptom is that you encounter more and more meaningful coincidences in your life, more and more synchronicities. And this accelerates to the point where you actually experience the miraculous. It's a beautiful quote. Very much so. So again, this, uh, this power of synchronicity is also God's way mm -hmm. of bringing us to a state, what I will use the word today is a trust. Yes. You and I have talked about this so much that um, for me, what synchronicity gives me is this ability to relax, let go, and trust in this higher power or higher self that you, you just talked about so that I can relax and get out of the way, that I can know that there is a perfect timing. And it may not be happening right at that moment, but it gives me a trust that all is well and that god or the higher power the higher consciousness absolutely is aware of me sees me and is directing my life mm. and i know fabian you you have definitely talked to me about that with you as well definitely yeah no i love that and i just had the awareness of one more thing that i don't think we talked about but it's one of the way for me also that is can be part of that language yes. is when things repeat themselves yes. it might be from different sources but that's another way to get our attention and maybe people have had that experience more often where someone mentioned one thing and then you hear it second time third time and that might still be that that happening that's still worth noticing absolutely it's like groundhog day the same <laughs> thing keeps coming around to you until maybe you start to pay attention right and, and maybe at the right time maybe it came before and it wasn't the right time until it is absolutely absolutely so i think you know our conversation today points out some really really great uh teachings that we can use to start having this kind of dialogue with, as you said, our higher self or the Tao happen more and more. Because all of us want to feel that we're seen, we're heard, and that we are cared for by the divine. And I think as Deepak's uh, closing quote there points out, we can know that as we begin to notice these, that they do accelerate. And it is an indication that our consciousness is growing. Because anything that we're aware of more and more means our consciousness is growing in that, right? And yes. so when we are aware of the miraculous, wouldn't you know, things become, it's like this, just when you things thought things couldn't get more miraculous, they get more miraculous. And I love, I wanna go back as we finish our conversation to something you said at the beginning that these can come to you in the most ordinary ways, right? Yes. Particularly when we're going through perhaps trying times or we're in a moment of frustration. My greatest synchronicities have come in moments where I didn't feel like I knew the way forward. And I, I want to just close our conversation tonight and uh, just by asking you, you had mentioned earlier in the conversation about butterflies. Mm -hmm. 
And I know this is a very big symbol for you and a big synchronicity, but I was wondering if you could share just a little bit as we finish about your connection and the synchronicity that you feel with butterflies. Yes, I can. <laughs> mm. And that's the way of talking about signs and synchronicities when things are difficult. Yes. Because although, again, it's not like there was not a connection that had started before, but when it became, it, it couldn't be mistaken for anything else with, with how it happened was um, after I had experienced a miscarriage. Mm -hmm. And through a connection of a girlfriend that I met on a support group, we all had experienced the same thing. Um, and it's interesting, I hadn't, I mean, I didn't know you're going to ask me about that, but the seed of, of that huge loop started in the unity of Tustin Gardens. Yeah. Yeah. So the, even that, that you asked me and we are doing this, conscious conversation in the context of a unity of testing. So one of my uh, friend noticed, well, there was a butterfly turning around and literally like came to land on my heart. Mm -hmm. And because of her awareness of what had happened that I didn't know, she mentioned, she made a comment about, I think it's Jonathan. And Jonathan was the name of the the soul that I, I had received, which means God has given. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why does she think it's Jonathan? And she said, oh, because there was a little ceremony and they had asked us if we wanted to give the names of the, the children that were unborn. And so I had given Jonathan's name. And she said, every time they were saying a name, they would release a butterfly. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning. And then in the center of the labyrinth that same day, mm -hmm. the labyrinth, that's the Schacht labyrinth, that's a whole other topic. Mm -hmm. But those, but there were two butterflies and they were flying around us and staying there with us. Mm -hmm. And then she researched it and sent me an email the next day and said, I found it. This is called the morning cloak butterfly. And that day, that same type of butterfly started to come to visit me in the backyard here at home every day for months and then it became years and I call it like a lineage of butterflies but to me that was another thing about God has given the meaning of Jonathan through which the butterfly came um, but again it needed the collective had she not given her part I would not have understood some of that that connection so that's again reinforcing how much the collective um, unlocks the different parts of those synchronicities as well A absolutely fabian and i just really every time that i hear that thread and that story from you my heart is touched so deeply and again uh, as we wind up our conversation, it's so powerful how the universe can come to comfort us as well through synchronicity. As I said before, and this has really become clear to me through our conversation, the universe can use the power of synchronicity to do what is needed in that moment. It can guide us, it can comfort us, it can let us know that I'm with you, everything is okay. And I know that was so present to you during that time of your life. And um, I just, I feel so blessed that you were able to share that with us today because it really is such a powerful example of what we've been talking about today. Yes. Yes. And thank you. Um, just, it just popped in, you know, I know we are about to close, but you know, the synchronicity also with Jonathan and you that um, on our first date, I learned about your, or I learned about your birthday. I think you told me on the first date. Mm -hmm. And when you told me, I was like, really? Can I say your, your birthday? Sure. So yeah. September 26th. And I, I didn't tell you anything that day. No. But to me, that was like, that's huge. Because that what would have been the due date. Would I have stayed pregnant? So 
you know, maybe in the universe, it was never intended for me to stay pregnant and have that baby. Yeah. But those seeds that were planted so that September 26th would be an important day for me that I would light candles years before on your birthday without me having met you. But, you know, <laughs> by that awareness of like let's bring more light into the world because i was celebrating jonathan love day without knowing it was your birthday but that's another full loop but again we, that was one i mean there were other reasons why you know i i felt our meeting was um completely aligned but those things were reinforcements yes absolutely and that's another layer you know of, of how synchronicities can come to us as a reinforcement that we are on the right track or this and sometimes synchronicity can be this pay attention this means something right just pay attention to this this is meant for you yeah so powerful so just to wrap up as we end fabian i think that again people are going to hear our shares today and you know it's a good it's a good thing to reflect on the synchronicities we've had in our own lives and be grateful for those the ways that we've been led as we talked about today and just notice that in those moments of gratitude we open to more of this communication happening with the divine with the Tao, or with our higher self yeah, yeah. and as you mentioned deepak chopra mentions this if you are really interested in having this kind of dialogue, you can keep a journal as they happen and write them down. Take note of them, be appreciative. And just that movement alone will open that doorway you talked about into an even greater magic. So what a wonderful conversation that we had today, Fabian. And uh, so grateful to have you here. And uh, for you to share what I've always known, which is your own journey with synchronicity and the powerful communication that you've had with the universe all these years. So thank you for being here and I will see you soon. Thank you for having me. It was beautiful. Thank you. Delightful. Thank you. Thank you. And so now we will be having our offertory. Um, first, I just want to say how um, fortunate I feel for that conversation with Fabien. Um, so much uh, beautiful sharing there and so much that we can do in our own lives, as I said, to have this dialogue and this communication uh, with the universe. So thank you again, Fabien. And now time for the offertory. And so if you look on your screen there there is probably a tab where you can hit if you would like to make a donation and i just want to say to everyone if you find value in these conversations or if you find value at the sunday service or in the overall community um, please give what you can you know we all hear this and we know this but it's worth saying that all of the great masters and sages have said that whatever you give comes back to you tenfold, a hundredfold. And so please give what you can. And it is much, much appreciated. And so with that, we're going to move into our final prayer today. And this is a very, very powerful and uh, wonderful prayer. Um, which comes from the Buddhist tradition. I know usually at this time, the prayer of protection is said. And so this is very similar to that, but coming from the, as I said, the Buddhist tradition. And this is called the Bodhisattva prayer for humanity. May I be a guard for those who need protection, a guide for those on the path, a boat, a raft, a bridge for those who wish to cross the flood. May I be a lamp in the darkness, a resting place for the weary, a healing medicine for all who are sick, a vase of plenty, a tree of miracles. And for the boundless multitudes of living beings, may I bring sustenance and awakening. 
enduring like the earth and sky until all beings are freed from sorrow and all are awakened. I'd like to thank all of you for joining us this evening for the Conscious Conversation. And it's been my delight to be with all of you. We'll be back again next Wednesday. So please tune in. And until then, peace in the Tao. I'm diving in, get ready, my soul. I'm diving in to the deepest kind of love, to the sweetest kind of life. Get ready, get ready, my soul. Everything I've ever done, everything I've ever seen, everything I've lost or won. Everything I've ever dreamed has brought me here to the present moment, here to a new beginning, here, and I'm seeing life so clear. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in. Get ready, my soul. I'm diving in to the deepest kind. To the sweetest kind of life Get ready Get ready My soul is here I go Deeper, deeper, deeper Than I've ever been before here I go Closer, closer, closer to my sacred source Here I go Deeper, deeper, deeper than I've ever been before sacred source get ready my soul I'm diving in get ready my soul I'm diving in into the deepest kind of love, into the sweetest kind of life. Get ready, get ready.
ready my soul get ready get ready my soul